Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning, everybody, as we celebrate once again the sixth Sunday of Easter in Cyber. We come together, though, as a community near and far as sinners. So as we continue this celebration, let us call to mind our sins and ask our loving God for his forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you suffered for our sins and opened the way to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you were put to death and released us from the power of sin and death. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you sent the Holy Spirit to be our advocate and guide. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. To the apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip when they heard it and saw the signs he was doing. For unclean spirits, crying out in a loud voice, came out of many possessed people, and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. Now, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for reason of your hope. But do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. disciples if you love me you will keep my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you always the spirit of truth whom the world cannot accept because it neither sees nor knows him but you know him because he remains with you and will be in you I will not leave you orphans I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me, and whoever loves me will be loved by my Father and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. doesn't kill you will make you stronger. I never thought I would be quoting Nietzsche in a homily, but his words seem very appropriate, not only to today's readings, but also to the world we find ourselves in in the spring of the year 2020. In a more modern sense, someone asked C.S. Lewis, why do the righteous suffer? Why not, he replied. They're the only ones who can take it. In today's second reading, St. Peter points out a very important and maybe the most important point of the gospel message. If it should be for God's will that you suffer, it is better that you do so for good deeds than for evil ones. 
This passage really, truly affirms the purpose of the resurrection, that Christ died for all of us and for all of our sins. He didn't discriminate. He didn't pick and choose who he died for. He wanted and wants to save all of us, whether we are just or unjust, so that he could draw us closer to him. When we hear that Christ wants us to be like him, it is not only in following his message of loving him and our neighbor as ourselves, but also that we should not be afraid to suffer like he did either. Many people are asking, why did this pandemic happen? Or why did God allow this to happen? We are also told that things happen for a reason. We don't know why, only God knows why, and he will reveal it to us in his time and on his terms. Our point of view is crucial when difficult things happen to us. A great example of a person transforming calamity by his Christ-like point of view is David Watson. Watson, a minister in England, died of cancer before these words of his were published in 1994. It's sometimes only through suffering that we begin to listen to God. Our natural pride and self-confidence have to be stripped painfully away when we become aware, perhaps for the first time, of our own personal needs. During the ministry of Jesus on earth, a tower fell in Siloam and killed 18 innocent people. Why did God allow it? was the immediate questions pressed by those around him. Jesus replied, not by answering the question of suffering, nor by giving a satisfactory solution to this particular tragedy. Instead, he came back to the practical challenge of God's word. I tell you, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. It may sound a little bleak, but Jesus was far more concerned with the person's eternal well-being than merely satisfying an intellectual curiosity. Here he was not dealing with the question of why, but with the question, what? What is God saying in this calamity? Watson concludes, through the unexpected diagnosis of cancer, I was forced to consider carefully my priorities in life and to make some necessary adjustments. I still do not know why God allowed it, nor does it bother me, but I am beginning to hear what God is saying and this has been enormously helpful to me. Not only during this pandemic, but also before and after it, we all, myself included, have had times of suffering that we did not understand or will understand. It forces us to look more closely at ourselves and our situation, just as David Watson did, and realize that the needs of others are more important than our own selfish desires and interests. More and more, people are being persecuted, not just for their religious beliefs, but for simply standing up for human decency, for caring for others, and for wanting to do what's best for others, instead of being selfish. Whether it's healthcare workers, governors of certain states, government officials being fired for warning of dangerous policies, or those willing to sacrifice for the good of all, they are all showing the premise of today's second reading, that the best witness to Christ is an honest life which refutes defamation and libel by its evident goodness. So we have to temporarily sacrifice some individual liberties so that others have a chance to survive. Isn't that a measure of suffering? Isn't that teaching us a measure of patience? Isn't that teaching us to be thankful for what we have, however much or how little that may be. It won't kill us like the virus could, but it will make us stronger. This is another way we will gain eternal life, by suffering, as St. Peter says, for our good deeds, not for our sins. It won't kill us, but it will make us stronger. By making us stronger, God is shaping us according to his will, and he definitely knows what's best for us, since he is the architect of the master plan. He will reveal it to us at a time of his choosing, and often when and in ways that we least expect it. 
famous evangelist told the following incident. I have a friend who was in a time of business recession, lost his job, a sizable fortune, and his beautiful home. To add to his sorrow, his precious wife died, yet he tenaciously held on to his faith, the only thing he had left. One day he was out walking in the search of employment. He stopped to watch some men who were doing stonework at a large church. One of them was chiseling a triangular piece of rock. Where are you going to put that? He asked. The workman said, Do you see that little opening up there near the spire? Well, I'm shaping this stone down here so that it will fit in up there. Tears filled my friend's eyes as he walked away. For the Lord had spoken to him through the, that laborer whose words gave new meaning to his troubled situation. There are no shortcuts in this process, and those that try to take them usually find out this very painful reality. To conclude with one more story, a man found a cocoon of the emperor moth and took it home to watch it emerge. One day a small opening appeared, and for several hours the moth struggled but couldn't seem to force its body past a certain point. Deciding something was wrong, the man took scissors and snipped the remaining bit of cocoon. The moth emerged easily, its body large and swollen, the wings small and shriveled. He expected that in a few hours the wings would spread out in their natural beauty, but they did not. Instead of developing into a creature free to fly, the moth spent its life dragging around a swollen body and shriveled wings. The constricting cocoon and the struggle necessary to pass through, pass through the tiny opening are God's way of forcing fluid from the body into the wings. The merciful snip was, in reality, cruel. Sometimes the struggle is exactly what we need, or what doesn't kill us will make us stronger. Suffering for our good deeds will make us that much stronger, able to win the battle of life, and ready to obtain eternal life. Thank you for your words, Reverend Deacon. Let us now all stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God and light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers, we believe that God hears and answers all of our prayers. Let us now put those prayers before our loving God. For the church, that like the early disciples, we will boldly proclaim the Christ to others, revealing the movement of the Holy Spirit through our words and actions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in public office, that they may respond with assistance and compassion to the difficult situations and issues that confront them. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer, that we may carry Christ in our hearts, willing to suffer for doing good in the world today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer, for students who are graduating this year, that they may take pride in their success and look forward to using their knowledge and talents in the next chapter of their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are having difficulty discerning their purpose or calling, that they may recognize the Holy Spirit's movement in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Cecilia Porter and Mike Pataki, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the mothers whose names are enrolled in the Mother's Day Novena, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We implore Almighty God for an end to the, to the pandemic, for a return the faithful to the sacraments. We pray for all tasks with caring for the sick and vulnerable, for decision-making for those who are afflicted in any way, and for those the Lord has called to himself. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear these and all of our prayers. And as always, we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed Bless be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from all my sin. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they proclaim.
font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, William our Archbishop, and all the people who serve you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, the Glorious Martyrs, Saint Francis, Saint Clair, Saint Maximilian Colby, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us show each other a sign of that peace. Peace be with you.
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am I not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ be saved for eternity. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now a word from our pastor. Good morning, everyone. By now, all of you know that both Governor Hogan and Archbishop Lori have put out a set of guidelines that we will help us to navigate a safe and um, important opening, reopening of our churches. I'm sure that everyone, including myself, are happy that we can finally see a light at the end of the tunnel. But I want to use this opportunity this morning to remind everyone that our area code of 21224 for Canton and Patterson Park um, have the highest amount of infections in our city. And this happens to be where our churches of St. Casmer and St. Elizabeth of Hungary are located. And so we need to move slowly and cautiously. Your health and your safety are our top priority. And so this coming week, my staff and I will meet to discuss how we can safely begin to move forward with regard to reopening of our churches. It will have to be baby steps for now, but steps that will eventually lead us to be together again. The decisions that we will make this coming week will be communicated to you uh, via clock note, email, the bulletin, or on the My Parish app. In the meantime, let us continue to pray for one another, for Archbishop Lori and for Governor Hogan. We will be together again soon. So please stay safe and stay healthy and know that you are not far from my thoughts and from my prayers. I also want to take this opportunity to offer a word of thanks to all of you who responded to our request for bagged lunches for beans and bread. While we asked for 350 lunches, we received 510, along with several cases of water, snacks, and fruit juice. So we help one another also during this time, and for that, I am truly grateful. May God continue to bless each one of you with his peace. And before Father Andy gives the final blessing, I invite all of you to pray along with me the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. 
Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all of the evil spirits who prowl around the world for the ruin of our souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia.